Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about um, Matthew Mercer delivering Scott Garibay Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so that's my that's my um, my paraphrasing of what he's accomplishing, and I'll explain why. So let's dig into this. Um, so how is Matthew Mercer Mercer delivering Scott Garibay Dungeons and Dragons? So uh, first of all, I have this. So I have a unique view of Dungeons and Dragons. I believe that Dungeons and Dragons is not a game; that it is a um, it's a human improvement engine that was uh, specifically disguised as a game by by uh, Gary Gygax and delivered in 1974, right? And so because of the, because I believe this, right, I have a completely different view of D and D of than anybody on the planet. And one of the ramifications of that view is I don't think that Dungeons and Dragons should be fun, right? I don't think uh, now basically, and here's what I'm saying: pursue peak Dungeons and Dragons, pursue the best Dungeons and Dragons that you can deliver to a table. And what is gonna happen is fun is gonna spark off of that object naturally, okay? And frankly, I don't I don't care if it does or not, right? Like, the reality is, I, fun isn't that important to me, right? I, I have a, um, it's just, it's not a huge goal in my life, right? I'm a really intense, driven person, and fun is just not a high priority to me, right? And I will say right now, I feel that people who pursue Dungeons and Dragons for fun, um, it's like using, um, it's just, it's a wrong understanding, right? I don't really feel that the purpose of Dungeons and Dragons is fun. It's, it's like, you can need dough, you can need bread with like a, a sledgehammer. Is it the best way to do it? No, it's, it's not a good, it's, it's silly, right? So, so here, okay. So I don't think you need fun for Dungeons and Dragons, right? And the reality is, I actually think Matthew Mercer is doing this now. He is delivering no fun Dungeons and Dragons, okay? And I think he's doing it right now with Mighty Nine Bell's Hells. And you're like, wait a second, Scott, are you even watching, you know, Mighty Nine and the Bell's Hells? Aren't you seeing the fun they're having? I see what you, I see a group of people who are portraying having fun. And you're like, Scott, they're not just portraying a, a Excuse me, they're all Hollywood actors. Like, <laughs> are you paying attention? It seems like they're having fun, but the reality is, if you think that uh, that Critical Role is having fun playing Dungeons and Dragons, you ain't paying attention, right? This is a multi-million-dollar um, industry at this point, and there's a lot at stake for all of them. So, what is Critical Role playing Dungeons and Dragons for? I think they're playing it for. Um, I think they're doing it for three things, right? So critical role, all right. I think that Matthew Mercer is dealing with, um, you know, uh, with Laura Bailey and Travis Willingham, right? Marisha Ray and Talison Jaffe, right? And Sam Rigel and Ashley Johnson, right? Um, yeah, they are they are doing they are getting three things from Dungeons and Dragons. They're getting love. There's literally two marriages that were birthed from it, right? Uh, Laura Bailey and Travis Willingham, Mercer A and Matthew Mercer, right? And getting money, a lot of it, millions, okay? And for cultural impact. I think there's massive cultural impact coming out of um, Vox Machina, Mighty Nine, and Bell's Hells, right? And Bell's Hells is the, current, uh, is the current campaign, right? And I think they've left fun behind, it is, I don't think there's any, and if you're like, oh, Scott, it looks like they're having a lot of fun. They're actors. Yeah, yeah, pay attention, right? They're not having fun. This is a multi-million dollar business at this point, right? And like any business, they want to, uh, they want to have cultural impact and they want to generate profit, right? And that's, that's perfectly acceptable. This is gap. And by the way, uh, Dungeons and Dragons is a powerful tool, is, is a powerful tool in the momentum of capitalism, Right. And so is Critical Role, right? It's a turbo on Dungeons and Dragons. That's exactly what it is, right? And so I really think that 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 Matthew Mercer also, it is my humble opinion that Matthew Mercer is now, I think, eyeing, um, you know, like what <laughs> what happens when nobody wants to hear his voice anymore, right? Um, and the, you know what? I don't even think we need to go that far. I think Matthew Mercer genuinely loves Dungeons and Dragons and is starting to eye a leadership position within Dungeons and Dragons as a career path for himself, right? And so right now he's a D&D canon hardback uh, author. Can he be a D&D designer? 
Absolutely, he could, right? He could replace uh, Christopher Perkins with 6E, right? And so the reality is I really feel like we're reaching a point where Critical Role has definitely left fun behind. There's, you know, and it's no longer on the map for them at all, right? And it shouldn't be. They have way bigger goals to accomplish, right? And so one of the things I really am excited about is I think Dungeons & Dragons starts when you stop having fun and you start changing lives. In my humble opinion, that's the purpose of Dungeons & Dragons, right? And Mercer is showing you. He has fundamentally changed the life of every single person at his table. And that's the new bar. If you're not changing the lives of your players for the better, you suck. Get to work. Mercer has shown the bar. Mercer has shown the path. Get to work. It ain't about fun. It's about love, money, and cultural impact. Every word that is my humble opinion, what's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion, when you get in the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.